Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Just My Opinion podcast. Today we are going to be talking about Rene's new single. We are going to be talking about her career post New Bell um, record label. We are also going to be talking about Le Bianca and her successes so far in the music scene. So down the line we'll also be sharing some details about the sponsor of this podcast that is Echo Online. Ambassador, what's up? Hello, hello, people. It's your boy Ambassador. Ambassador again doing his thing. Yeah, so um, have you watched Rainey's new single? Yes, I have. Thoughts? So, one, I think she's trying to find herself. It reminded me a lot of a certain um, old Jennifer Lopez video where she was performing. So, so, so this, a couple of the shots reminded me of this, a particular, should I call it, um, for instance, this uncertain epoch, a particular period in musical history. Mm. Even like the, the line she was throwing, part of her chorus was, I don't know if it's copying or it's just, yeah. If you have listened to, if you had my love, my love. So part of that lyrics is from that Jennifer Lopez song. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. Mm. So if you listen to If You Had My Love by Jennifer Lopez, you are going to pick up um, a lot of the things she's putting out there. Um, I also think that, that that's why I said, I think she's trying to find herself. Mm-hmm. I don't want to judge her too much based on that. So leaving um, New Birth, I saw she put now something, the Riga, Riga music or something like mm-hmm. that. That's surely her new level. Yeah. She has been silent for a while. Now she comes out with something very, very sexy. Mm. So Renise before years was sexy, but then there was a shy girl who was trying to be sexy. Mm-hmm. And now she really went out there. Mm. Um, the music too kind of changed. Mm. There was the Bikusish hip hop flavor, which Jovi had been giving her for a while. Mm. Um, she changed a little bit. The song looks like a song which should be appealing to even a very Western audience, mm-hmm. which might be the direction she's trying to go in. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't. That's why I said I don't know how comfortable she is in the sexiness of the video. Given that I know she's a pastor's daughter. Mm. I, I I don't, but, but over time in New Bell, I feel like she has been trained to be more worldly, for lack mm. of a better word. Mm. word. So, but this worldly was very worldly for even Renee's. <laughs> and if you look at most of the comment sections that whoa, whoa, were like, hey, I want to be a model. Look at that model dancing with Renee's and things like that. Mm. So it was very, very sexy given that we are also in a very conservative society. Yeah. I think some of the media outlets might have a challenge airing this particular song, this particular video, especially. Because the lyrics are not too wild. Mm. Although they have a lot of underlined uh, meanings to them, but the video was a little bit very sexy for the Kamonia audience. But I like it though, because most of the time, I just feel like our, our media and our, should I call it, society can be very hypocritical at times. They, they, they act like hypocrites in the sense that they, we watch the Beyonce's, Rihanna's do these very things, and our media outlets even air them. Mm-hmm. But when it's done by Cameroonian, they have an issue with it. Mm-hmm. If we are that conservative, we should shut the doors for everybody, most especially people who are not Cameroonian, and we can even give some consideration for some that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that generally that's my take. The video was very sexy. I don't know how comfortable she is in that level of sexiness. Can she be consistent with it? It's a very different spin from the Lasso's. Her biggest hit was Lasso's, which was known for, and I think she had been trying to get to some level of Lasso's success, which um, I don't necessarily think this song would give it. Mm-hmm. But for me, if she can be consistent in this brand or this genre, Mm-hmm. then maybe something bigger might come down the line from, 
from this year. But I think I, I like the song in general. Don't get me wrong. I really like the song. But it's not a song I'm going to go on YouTube typing and searching for. It's a song that it comes on and I'm going to hum to it. And it looks like a song that can grow into you. I mean, I can grow to like the song if it's played over and over or if, it, if you have a special attachment to it for one reason or the other. Yeah, so first, the first thing that came to my mind when I watched the song was like old school vibe. Like that was the first phrase that came to my mind. He had a lot of the old school vibe. Even the, so they were dressed in um, yoga outfit, but the yoga outfits were wearing its old school yoga outfit. And yeah, so he had a lot of that vibe. And yeah, like even the comment section, people were also saying like she wants to go, um, or what is it, Oban? She's going Oban or using that phrase or something like that. Which is it's very different from what um, Renice is known for, like like you said, and I don't know. I, I just feel like majority of her fan base came from the Dana Souls and her other songs, which had a lot of BQC vibe. I don't know if that fan base would love that vibe, would love this vibe too. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But, just to throw in something there, mm -hmm. then you go ahead. You said, and I also said the same thing. As you were talking, I thought about it. Mm -hmm. She was known for the Lasso's vibe, mm -hmm. but maybe that's not who she really was. Mm -hmm. That's why she could not be consistent with the Lasso's vibe, mm -hmm. hence the a sudden disappearance for a while. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we knew her for was not really who she was. I'm mm -hmm. just saying maybe there are lots of maybe's there. I'm just saying maybe this new vibe is what she really wants to do and what she can be consistent. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like, and we know consistency wins over talent, even. Yeah, talent, yep. inconsistent talent, no. Yeah, so, um, yeah, if she's, she can keep a more consistent pace on this vibe, then by all means. And I wanted to mention her exit from New Bell. It, it's, it wasn't like the other exits we have heard about. Yeah, look at yeah, even the statement. Really yes, look at even yeah. the statement she made. Um, she said, "Let me check. Let me look for the, her statement." She said, I mean, like, "Being beef and problem people, mm -hmm. I was looking for any hints of problems. Mm -hmm. But even when I saw that the video director is still the Dukong guy, yeah. So she's still working with people who's, and I was like, this is this is perfect. That way." Some growth, she could build up the leverage of the things she was doing with Joby because those bridges have not been broken. Yeah. Hopefully, we never know, but I'm just saying from what we can see, mm -hmm. like she's still in touch with those bridges which she can build upon that foundation. Yeah, and she says, um, today I'm, I'm excited to present to you my record label, Ringa Rex, spending time under the guardians of our father, Boko God, learning and discovering my own sonic space and expression has made a sustainable change in my career. I am forever grateful for his mentorship, and now it's time for this little bird to fly out and create her own nest. I'm immensely thankful and grateful for all the love and support I'm getting from my entire New Bell family. Ringa Rex is not a separation, but an extension extension and to you my most cherished fans i count on you to continue this journey with me all i can say at the moment is it's going to be filled with the best and unique music we can bring to you as always let's keep working hard to create a conducive space for the next generation That's to come perfect. in cameroon yeah so I, I i definitely like the way it sounded like um god god bless Venice. yeah yeah. Good example for other artists. Yeah, it's like I'm not separating, it's an extension. And I feel like in the West you have a lot of things like that. A lot of people who um like um yep. I know um I might be mistaken, but I know like Big Sean when he left um how do you call this Jay Z's Jay Z uh Who is that? Big Sean, Big Sean. Yeah. He was was he on the when um, he left what? Uh was he on that Def Jam? Live Nation. Wait, no, it's I'm talking about oh, sorry, it's Kenny West I'm trying to I talk think all about. Of them. Kenny West was on that Def Jam, right? No, so they the chain, right? Yeah. Most of the time, like I use the example, Eminem was under Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre had aftermath, mm -hmm. Eminem had shady records, mm -hmm. 50 Cent had G Unit. Mm -hmm. So they never broke that bridge. Eminem stayed under Aftermath, and mm -hmm. even when he was signing his own artist, who was now 50 Cent, mm -hmm. he said was under Eminem and under Dr. Dre yeah. because Eminem was under Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. And even when 
He said that they're signing other ads like Lord Bam and the rest under G unit. They were under G unit, under Shady, and after under aftermath because everybody had a share because everybody had contributed the building of this various thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing for uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Drake. Mm -hmm. Drake, Nicki Minaj, and the rest. They created their own things. He's created his OVO, or is it an OVO or OVO movement? But he was under Young Money, and Young Money was under, um, how do they call these other guys? Uh, Birdman and the rest. Mm. Yeah. So uh, they were calling it um, YM, Young Money, Cash Money. Mm -hmm. Young Money was under Cash Money. Mm -hmm. And then he went, so, so, they, they, and what happens is when you do that, the media connections of cash money or the media connections on new belt, you just benefit of them. Mm. The media guys shooting on new belt, you benefit of it. Mm. All those things you are just giving. But when these people go out there and they saw that you have broken that bridge, yeah. all the years of, of of knowledge acquired and built, you have lost it because you have just insulted someone for 30 minutes on the floor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For free. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I, 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 I like her exit. I, I think this is the way art, artists should um, exit a record label and keep things yeah, cordial like that. Let's proceed to talk about Libyanka. Libyanka, she initially came to the music scene when she was on The Voice and she wowed the um, judges on The Voice with her awesome voice. And um, after The Voice, like she had... She got at her, her. I think. I think um, her base found base came from the voice. That's where she got at her base found fan base, and from there she um, was able to drop some singles. And the one which is going viral, it has been going viral for a while now, and it's still going viral. And she's having a lot of co collaborations due to that song, which is People. And I, I feel like the reason why that song is. Um, the way it is and pe many people are uh, vibing to the song is it's it is relatable lyrics it is relatable lyrics of i'm going through hard times and people are misinterpreting um what i'm going through or people ignore what i'm going through people care less about what i'm going through people don't check on each other like everybody wherever you find yourself in the world can relate to that emotion and yeah, I, I definitely like the trajectory. So why we're talking about this today, because this song has been, I, I think it's, it, it's, it should be going towards a year now when she dropped the, um, the song. Yeah, it has been on for a while, but why we're talking about it today is because the number of views has passed, has surpassed Kole La Petty. Kole La Petty um, was this Cameroonian song which went viral back in the day and it was the most viewed Cameroonian song for a really long time and it was at um, 75 million views. Um, as of yesterday when I checked out Lebianca's track, it's now at 77 million views. So this blog post which you're seeing now is talking about Lebianca's song being at 76. Right now it has, it has gone to 77 and I think it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. So, um, the ambassador, before we even proceed to talk about Lebianca's success, first let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Echo Online. Yeah. Yes, greetings, people. Once again, it's your boy, Ambassador Ambassador, again talking about Echo Online. Echo Online is a tool which has been built by Africans for Africans to help entertainers, artists in particular, to monetize their art. What do I mean monetize your art? Artists most of the time have a challenge in the African landscape where they find it difficult to make money off their art. Most of the time, the tools which we are using are not, not built for Africans and not built by Africans. So they don't take into consideration the African context. For example, an artist is going to upload his song on one of these sites, be it Tidal or iTunes, and does not have a means to get his money. What does he do? He gets somebody in the US to create an account, so that way he makes his sales, the person can receive the money, then transfer the money to them. A lot of channels for their money to get to them at times, you lose money along the way, either for charges or because of dishonesty. You lose money along the way. It's also very challenging to upload things on those sites because at times they ask for certain details which African artists don't have. Secondly, most African artists have an issue of exposure. How do I build the fan base? 
how do I get people to know about my music? On Echo Online, there's a disconnect most of the time for African artists between their local fan base and those who buy. Those who buy on iTunes and Tidal are mostly Africans in the diaspora. The real fan base in Africa cannot get in touch with this music and cannot support you financially. And this is not a sustainable business model because most of the time, if your core fan base cannot support you, then you cannot get the value you really deserve. Echo Online is here to give you that value. You can build a local fan base monetize your ad using this local fan base, sell your things on Echo online, and then get your money using mobile money and, and any other payment method you are comfortable with. Echo online is under construction. So there are lots of services I'm going to mention here that are under construction. But I'm just saying that artists should get out there and then get familiar with Echo online. I always use the story of YouTube. The first users of YouTube became millionaires because they were familiar with YouTube before the rest of the band wagon jumped on board. We got the special customer service and support of the YouTube team before the rest came on board. So get on board right now and familiarize yourself with Echo. Echo.online is here to make life easier and better for the African artists. So Echo.online, the power is in your hand. Yeah, definitely jump on Echo.online. That's a good way. Like the ambassador said, build your fan base, make money, get the viral song make money with the viral song don't just get the viral song and um, down the line people realize that it was just viral people just knew your name and then you become the artist with the viral song who still has to take public transportation and people see you on the road sharing taxis with them and they're like do i know you from somewhere and yeah and they're actually like no you don't know me, don't know me. <laughs> you know, yeah you want you want your viral song to match your pocket so that you can i mean yeah Okay, let's talk about Libyanka. Her, um, her, pre her recent success, her views have surpassed Kolela Petty. I, I, I just, so right now, Libyanka is collaborating with Aria Star. She has collaborated with Becky J. T Pain just did a cover of her song. Um, who else? This Omali, Omali Rai was on the collaboration with Aria Star too. So a lot of people are jumping on it on TikTok. It's it's viral. People are doing covers of the song. If you have to say something to Libyanka today, what will you say to her? So what I would say is she should put in place structures which will permit, you know, like that people will get a hit get exposed to certain top artists but you don't build that network and then when your boss dies off you start calling that same artist and not picking up your call because now your boss is dead and you're no longer that relevant so with this first song that's the song she needs to take to solidify her team build her networks build her capital base and all of those things so that she can now grow organically or sustainably over the years that's if she chooses to be consistent but I also have a question, which might be controversial, but I don't know if Libyanka's story is a true Cameroonian success story. Why am I saying this? Libyanka is a Cameroonian mm -hmm. musician from Bamenda. She was born in Minneapolis, that's in Minnesota. At age four, she moved to Bamenda with her mother and brother. Her father stayed back in the US. At 18, she moved back to the U.S. While she was in Cameroon, I think I've met, I, I think I've seen about two people online were saying they knew her in Cameroon. She used to sing, she was in the studio back in the days. I don't know how true those stories are, which I see online. But it means she kept the fire burning that musically while she was in Cameroon. I'm sure she picked up some of the musical influences too from Cameroon. We can also tell that she has a very strong Western influence in her music. Although she's doing the Afro thing. Also, why I ask this question of is that the true Afro Cameroonian success story? Looking at her life, someone who came to Cameroon at age four, left by 18, I don't think her life is a typical Cameroonian life. Going back to Cameroon, going back to the US at age 18, gives her exposure to it's almost like the Jedinas and all of these other Africans while they were blown up in the US. They are Nigerian, but I don't know if their success can really be a typical Nigerian. It's like, you will not take um, Jedina or Wale and compare Wale to 
um, I will blow up in Nigeria, in Nigeria, or to um, who else? Who can I even call? It's typical an ice prince who was 100% Niger. Because okay, MI, MI went for at least four or five years to the US, it's called Janine Kepa. But he blew up 100% in Niger. The Bianca's blow up, as you have mentioned, you have given a little bit of her CV. It's mostly out there. Given that she moved back to the US at age 18, you said it was on the voice. It's not the voice can run. All of those things are out there. She enjoyed the facilities and the structures of a solid um, entertainment value chain, which is the American entertainment value chain. Mm -hmm. And those structures are accompanying artists. Once she was successful in The Voice, most artists who leave The Voice already have some platform and some level of exposure and networks just from taking part in some of those shows, especially if you perform well. So given that that was the case, she definitely benefited off some of these things. So that's why I keep on saying, putting her out next to Franco, who is a Chakala Bobe, raw Cameroonian artist, artist who grew up from that mud with us, I don't know if it's a fair mm. assessment or a fair comparison. But it's not changing the fact that she's Cameroonian and partly American. I don't know if, yeah, that's what I read online, Cameroonian partly American. But I know Cameroonian don't have double nationality, so maybe she's very Cameroonian because if she's American, she might have lost her Cameroonian nationality. But those are all things I'm not too sure of. Mm. I'm just saying all of those things to buttress the fact that I don't think it's a fair comparison to put that next to Franco, who blew up from, we saw you blow up. Mm. And yeah, I think her own success will be better handled. Ceteris variables still giving all the factors I've mentioned of she's in America, the structures are there, the exposure is there, she might definitely get run into good management and then like accompanying structures to make sure that you get your money. I can see the way her growth is going, she'll definitely do good. Unlike Franco, who did not have those structures, could not accompany, could not follow up on his money, did not make the money he was supposed to make up the blow up, as we said, that he had could not be consistent on that brand here. Now I cannot really say much of what he's doing and stuff like that. So that's just my take with regards to the comparison of Bianca and Frank. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I get I get what you're saying, right? Yeah, it's it's two different stories, it's two different origins. Yeah. And it's it's kind of unfair to to make that comparison. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But, but either way, Cameroon wins. Mm. Cameroon, oh yeah, Cameroon <laughs> wins. Whatever success she gets, she will share somewhere with her, so it is fine. Mm. I'm very, very happy for her. I'm very proud of seeing Libyanka. She's Cameroonian. Some Nigerians thought she was Nigerian. As Nigerians, she's not Nigerian. She's Cameroonian. Yeah, so, I, yeah. No, I was also yeah, like, so and her hip... to correct them, and we are very proud that at least for once, we are not the disgruntled on successful level is <laughs> complaining that why have you why have you we are successful now we have Bianca and nigerians and, and that's just to show you that when we do good and great things nigerians will support nigerians will carry they are not even bothered about it that doing covers with that and everything so we i are know, very proud of the Bianca. i know the, the crazy thing is look at when cameroonians have a viral song nigerians jump on it nigerians take advantage like with Libyanka now, all these collaborations she's having with um this Omale and Ariasa, who, who they are oh, both um Nigerian artists buzzing presently. Look at when um Stanley Eno had the MP, he Davido collaborated with him. Like, but can you also see the reverse? What reverse? No, I remember when um uh, what's his name. Mr. Leo did a call of a certain Nigerian artist and Cameroonians were offended. Mm. Like how can I hold Mr. Leo go and be doing mm. a cover for such a small mm. room? the song was blowing up. Mm -hmm. Same thing, this guy, uh, what was his name? Mike Monster did a cover for Black Sheriff. Mm -hmm. And some Cameroonians were not happy about it. But those are just some of the things to say. Respect yeah. success and maybe a little bit of that light will be thrown on you. Yeah. Just respect success and darkness will cover you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, literally darkness, eh? because. <laughs> Yes, or Ned is not giving us any pity. Yeah, I mean, like, if let me say a Jovi is a buzzing Cameroonian artist, Black Sheriff starts buzzing in Ghana, he reaches out and does a collaboration with Black Sheriff. Do you know Great things mean? happen. Yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, I, I feel like this is something that we need to take note of and kind of emulate it because, look, I, I just, um, so I know I'm late to the whole thing, but it was just a few weeks back when I got, I heard this song for um, Who's Your Guy? Which Tiwa Savage jumped on it, did a remix of the song um, with um, Spyro. So I'm like, Tiwa Savage is big. She's an established Was artist. The queen of Afro. Yeah. But it's like an upcoming artist, successful, making buzz now. You jump on it, do the remix with... Yeah, that, like, you hit the buzz. Yeah. You ride the wave and you jump off. That's it. That's it. Anyway, so um, I want to read this because I know I, I saw it online. and It was in line with um, the Le Bianca um, Franco thing say le bianca's people overtakes franco's color appetite as cameron most viewed youtube song in a stunning twist le bianca's hit song people has surpassed franco chat topping color appetite to become the most viewed cameroonian song on youtube while color appetite had dominated the charts for years people has managed to capture the heart and attention of youtube viewers worldwide amassing an impressive 76,000 views compared to kolela Petit 75 i think he made a mistake so it's 76 million and 75 million franco's kolela Petit was a sent sensation when it was released in 2015 quickly becoming one of the most popular songs in cameroon and earning him a reputation as one of the country's top artists however libyanka's meteoric rise to the top proves that she has what it takes to compete with the best in the industry with her infectious melody and uplifting lyrics libyanka has captured the attentions of audiences not just in cameroon but around the world the competition between the two songs may not be over, but for now, Libyanka can bask in the glory of her success. I, I, I think I think the competition is over. I don't I don't think Franco's um <laughs> song Cole La Petit will rise to any yeah. Like it's like this is it's twenty fifteen and Libyanka's song is still like under a year and he has already surpassed it. So like yeah, the competition is over. And I, I just feel like the song keeps on is just going on the rise. It's just on the rise. Yeah. Okay, people. That's it. Let us know. As usual, we want to know what you think in the comments below. Let us know. Um thumbs up to this video. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.